is a prophecy on Israel National Radio on Ruth Sheva. The show is simulcasted as Messiah Hour on YouTube. You can email me at messiahhour at gmail.com. Our guest this afternoon is a frequent guest of the program. He's a rabbi from Sfat, and you can check out his website, soulmazal.com. Please bring back a warm welcome to Rabbi David Katz. Rabbi Katz, how are you doing out there? Hey, Ari. It's always a pleasure to be here with you and all the listeners. Absolutely. So today our topic is going to be Zionism. Part of the reason we're doing this episode is I've been getting a lot of emails from listeners out there saying they wanted a whole show about this. And as I said before the program, I'm here to do what the fans want. They want to show up Zionism, but we're going to do it. So that's what we're going to do. Let's start first with the basics. Zionism, where did it begin? Zionism. Okay. This is uh, the answer that many people are going to be shocked to hear, which is a good thing, right? Because uh, as you know as well as I do, uh, what we hear in the news, CNN, Israeli politics, Zionism, are you a Zionist? Is he a Zionist? You know, it, it's, it's a destroyed term. And you know, I'm, I'm proud to, to say where it comes from. It's one of those things that, you know how sometimes you have a nugget of truth that doesn't really get the airtime it deserves and, you know, like a, like a party piece, you know, when it comes up. It's always like, oh, that's that's kind of nice, you know. So uh, this is one of those times. Zionism, uh, you know, you'll hear that it comes from Herzl. Everybody on the planet will right. tell you that. Um, and this is where the good news comes in. Uh, it actually goes back to the Vilna Gone. That's right. right? So, yeah. you know, the Vilna Gone's already kind of getting into, uh, wow, really? You know? um, who's the Vilna Gone? Where did it start? Let me give a bit of a quick bio. Sure. All right, so and, and a quick uh, Kabbalistic Jewish timeline for perspective. So we'll say the temple comes down in, t in the year around, let's say, 2000. Or give it we know it's not exactly, but t give or take. Or 2,000 years ago, sorry. Year zero, 2,000 years ago. And you're going to have uh, you know, the destruction of the temple. You're going to have, obviously, a yearning to come back to the land. Uh, you're going to have the Talmudic era. You're going to come out of that. Rabbinic writings, again, you know, an awareness of the land, Tisha B'Av holiday, uh, Rabbi Akiva, Shimon Bar Yochai, you know, the, the kind of the icons of our past. Out of that, you're going to have the Zohar, Kabbalistic uh, thought, and then that's going to be undercover until about the year 1500, um, where it becomes mainstream. We're not talking about Spain and the year 1200, like it came out, but you know, it's real study. In service to it, call it Sfat, uh, since we're in Sfat now, right? So Sfat made it big with the Arizal, Chaim Vital, uh, Yosef Karo's you know, whole thing with his Kabbalah. He was also in the Kabbalah, um, the Ramak. You have all, you know, the Sfat makes it big. You're going to have Chesed La Avraham, a famous Kabbalistic work. Then, you know, now you're going to, you're, you're talking about, you're coming into modern history. Um, you're going to go into the year 1700. And you're going to meet the Ramchal. I think by now any, everybody's you know, familiar with the Ramchal in some way. I think we all kind of love the Ramchal's works. Uh, you know, Derech Hashem, Path of the Just. Anybody that's in a self-work and in, in, in a slant of Torah and Judaism will get into the Ramchal. And, and he's very much a, an early Zionist. You know, a real strong yearning for the land. In fact, he's buried in Tiberias next to Rabbi Akiva. Okay, wow. so, you know, so you're already getting like, you know modern energy coming into it. And then you're going to get a burst in the year 1740. It's a prophecy year. There's a lot going on with 1740. You're going to have the advent of Chassidut, Chassidus, Bol Shem Tov. You're going to have the Vilna Gon come on the scene in the exact same year. And the Sfardi Mukubalim, uh, I think it's the Rashash, was also in this time period. Uh, the Chida, which is the grandson, of, or, or great grandson or grandson of Chesed Lavraham. So you're getting Judaism today that you know was invented in 1740 for all intents and purposes. If you're in the Talmud, if you're in the thought, if you're in the Kabbalah, if you're in the Halacha, if you're into the land of Israel, right? Whatever you connect to as a Jew, it pretty much was invented at that time or, or you know, came into form, its present form at that time. Now, I'm so happy you're bringing this up because I knew this kid back in the day that he really did not like religious people so much or Haredim. He considered himself kind of modern, orthodox, or conservative, something like that. He was a big Zionist, and he thought that the two were 
different extremes or that religious people weren't Zionists or, or something to that effect. And it's interesting that it has a religious beginning. I want to know that Zionism that you dis discussed, how does that merge with today's Zionism? Right. So, so the second part of the timeline, which answers that question, um, aside from all the, the Jewish origination at that time, um, one of the main thrusts of the Vilna Gon, and again, the Vilna Gon was your preeminent Talmudic authority of that time, a major Kabbalistic authority, even though that's not talked about as much, and you're going to have ultimately you know, Hasidut and Chabad. Uh, Chabad, part of Hasidut, but everyone that's involved in light Torah circles, at least, is aware of the feud between the Vilna Gon and Chabad, the Alter Rebbe. Right. All right. So figure that's going on, okay? Because like, this is a bit of a dynamic I'm laying out, right? That's like a circle going on. It's happening. And the Vilna Gon, in his own personal mission, his own personal work, you know, let's say not so much for the Jewish people in terms of, you know, this is the law, this is what we do. But, you know, on the national level, the big picture, he's looking at Israel. He's going to go to Israel, but he, on the way, his boat burns down, uh, whatever it is. I don't know exact, you know, what happened, but he couldn't go. He was on his way and it didn't go. He sends his students instead. And the Hasidim, largely Chabad, Merge with the Vilna Gon students in Israel. Right? So you're going to hear about this one called this one a name, and you know this one is that. But they they, they, they work together in Sfat and in, in Jerusalem mostly. And there are books written and the, by the Vilna Gon students. One many people have heard of, uh, the Messiah, son of Yosef, Meshep and Yosef work, Kol Hator, the major messianic work of, that, of the Vilna Gon and his students. Um, that was penned at that time. And there was uh, three or four other books in a series. And this is where the Vilna Gon Zionism came down. It's called Sionit Grait, Zionism of the Gra. And they worked together, the Lubavitchers and the Graniks in Israel, working together, really laying the ground foundation and map and, map and everything that we're doing today and to try to bring and hasten the redemption those guys did it in around the year 1800, give or take. Again, this is Is It Prophecy here on Israel National Radio, Arut Sheva. The show on YouTube is Messiah Hour. You can email me at messiahhour at gmail.com. Our guest this afternoon is Rabbi David Katz from solmazal.com. Rabbi Katz, let's talk about some of the pieces that have changed since the beginning of Zionism and some that have remained the same. Right. So changed everything, remained the same, maybe nothing. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, you know, let me, let me just extend the timeline, and I think we can answer that question by the timeline. Okay, so in the year, let's say, the Vilna Gon is going to die. Get, you know, all my dates are give or take, okay? He's going to die around 1800, and the students are going to continue, let's call it until 1850, okay? And so the, the, the Lubavitchers and the Gronics are going to work laying the foundation, they're going to run into a lot of problems. Money, just temperament in Israel. Um, I'm guessing there was probably some Arabic resistance based on what we know um, in the end of the timeline. Whatever it was, it was not easy. An earthquake destroyed Sfat in the middle. That's why there's no remnant of the Vilna Gon at that time. It was not easy. Very hard. Uh, ultimately, it may, you could even say it failed on some level. Now, again... It's going to get hijacked around 1850. So there you have uh, Herzl is going to pick up the heels from the, the, the early religious Zionism. Because in, in anything, I think, in Judaism, when it starts off holy, I think marketing, unfortunately, always gets in the way. Right? <laughs> you, you, uh, you, the last time that happened big, they called it Christianity. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. That that's always to the Romans and all yeah. circumcision. We're not going to be doing that anymore. Right. So you know the Kabbalah Center too. So there's always a way to make money off this stuff, unfortunately. Um, and you know, I read the Herzl diaries, and I, I must say he's he was quite profound. I mean, this guy, you know, living in Israel, you you see Israel as I do, just from a physical perspective at least. And the things that he talked about, I mean, we're living it. He's laying the ground. The ground. We're saying it's going to look like this, and we're going to have that. And they did it. That's the crazy part. This lunatic asking Rothschilds for billions of dollars back then. 
And he's saying in the diaries, you know, hey, I'm going to go talk to Ludwig van whoever, you know, and, and ask him for $45 billion. Trans and he did it. That's the, that's the crazy thing. So and, and the visions they laid down, you know, the army is going to be like this and they're going to and they did it. So it became a radical secular, you know, the money and the politics, you know, Herzl saw a gold nugget here and he took it and it became secular. Now, remember, Herzl never saw Israel. Right. So the Yishuv, as the Vilna Gon called it, was I mean, these guys are sweating it out while Herzl's talking with Rothschild. I mean, it's pretty radical, you know, and, and, the, and it was the, the, the spiritualists had a hard time. Now, by the end of the 19th century, the Ottomans are coming to their end, and the Ottomans are what made religious life here nearly impossible. When, when that happened, religious you know, entities left. It was, it was, again, nearly impossible. And the secular Zionism was in full force. Now they're making pilgrimage here, and they're backed financially. I mean, the early settlers were backed militarily by Britain. I mean, you're talking about the greatest army in the planet, backing the Jews, teaching them how to fight like a, a real army. The Arabs didn't have a chance. I mean, we were like an elite forces. You can read all this on, on the links on Wikipedia, um, all the alliances that were drawn. And it was it was all, you know, not even conspiracy. Just It was factual, you know, that the Arabs wanted their land, the Jews wanted theirs, and everybody had a cut and a vision, and ultimately we, we know how it turned out. And because of the dirtiness involved, you had a lot of burying authentic Zionism because obviously it was going to fuel an entity that they didn't believe in, the religious. And by 48, Zionism of the Grad, Sini Grait, was gone. They buried the Svarim. And Zionist, um, Zionism was full force. They're building Tel Aviv, you know, and all the visions you see of radical, you know, socialist, communist, Zionism, Ashkenazi, there wasn't a sfard in the land. So it became secular. The Arabs obviously hated that. And by now, it's it's just a nicer word for capitalism, <laughs> basically. Well, it's interesting some of these points about what has stayed the same because let's call it like it is. There, there's not been one Sephardi prime minister in Israel's history. So the Ashkenaz dominance, if you will, still continue in, in that realm. And when you talk about Herzl's dream, the dream of the early Zionists, the meaning of the secular Zionists, were that it would be a country just like all the other countries. You would have a is Jewish policeman arresting a Jewish prostitute. That was some of the goals. I mean, we're going to tell how it is in the show. He was able to accomplish that to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you're talking about the Arabs being upset at what they're seeing. How does the Palestinian claim of the land, because they say that they were here, it's their land, etc. How does that fit into this model that you're talking about? Right. So, yeah, you know, this everybody wants to know this answer, you know. And I think I had a bit of siyat to the to to really research it, and I think I found the basis of it. And it's all verifiable on the internet. Now, remember, today's Zionism to finish the model is secular by design. Um, it's capitalist. So again, once you bring in money, the religious tend to like it a lot more. <laughs> it's very profitable to be a Zionist today. So, uh, you know, religious are now Zionists. Um, simply because it's 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 a moderate Judaism that we can believe in uh, to the point where you know the government uh, parties have the uh, religious are in government parties and it's okay you know it's okay to the fact that no one's saying like how dare Shas exist no one says that right so it, they've merged politics and money and capitalism and even the socialism it's all merged into a nice blend of modern Judaism called Zionism. It's not what it was. It's not what it was yesterday. But today's blend is pretty parv, and it's okay to be a Zionist today. What the world fights is not what they're actually fighting. So, again, who we are today may reflect a little bit of the Zionists of the Gras, maybe 48, maybe 72, whatever it is. Um, it's a nice type of benign Judaism that it's nice. It's not great. It's not bad. It's, you know, it's like pizza. I mean, <laughs> Pizza is always pretty good uh, most of the time. <laughs> and it's good if it's cold, it's good, it's hot. It's That's good, right. Uh, you know, it, so. It's not quite gourmet, but it works. Right. So, so like now, so who who does Iran and Palestine hate? What are they? Who who are they? What are they doing? Now, the the source is very interesting. I mentioned the Ottomans. 
And when you look, and the, the Palestinian claim is Jews were never here, they were always here. And now, so obviously that's a lie, but how do they get off saying such a radical lie? You know, it's like me on coming out, well, you know, when I told Ari he should be a radio host, like, he did? Yeah, of course I did, buddy. Like, like, no, you didn't. You know? So it's like a blatant lie. Um, the Ottomans, as I said, made living here religiously nearly impossible. Um, financially, culturally, it was it was terminated. The Jews left to go, I think, Egypt or and other places, but they left for finances. And again, you know, as Jewish history says, when it gets rough, you leave and you move into another neighborhood. At that time, our numbers were not you know, absolutely terminated, but very low. And Germany wanted the Ottomans to fight on their side. And the British wanted the Arabs to help them uh, rebel against the Ottomans. The Ottomans were uh, a blend of Islam that the local Arabs didn't appreciate. And therefore the Arabs fought alongside the British in theory and they are promised the land in, in cooperation. So at that time, again, the Jews were here in the settlement. After the Ottomans uh, released the grip some, Jews were coming back uh, and flourishing in the, in the, in the modern Aliyah. Uh, but by that time, the Palestinian problem was already born because the numbers had diminished to a point where the, the Palestinian word was erected with kavana, with intention, and there was hostilities between the Yishuv and the Palestinians, or the budding Palestinians. Throw in British, um, just antagonist, you know, abuse. You know, saying you're going to get this, you're going to get that, and and obviously we fought for the land, and they fought for the land. The British had the the key, and they were promising both sides. And, uh, and on this point, the the Russians got the cable that the British reneged the deal and basically blew it up in the in the British face and that's where the problem began because they were promised but we were promised too I mean it was, it was ridiculous and as the process went went through as we all know the Palestinians rejected um, the right to have land we took it we got the land and that's where we are today again this is is it prophecy on Israel National Radio Arut Sheva and the show is Simon Cassidy as Messiah Hour on YouTube email me at messiahhourgmail.com our guest this afternoon is Rabbi David Katz of Solmazal.com. Now, Rabbi Katz, you were talking about the Palestinian claim, how that fits within the model. I want you to talk a bit about, quote-unquote, modern conspiracy theories, things like Zionism runs the world, Zionism controls Hollywood, Zionism controls the media, etc. Where do those things come from? So, you know, the, there's all the propaganda, um, you, know, you know, ancient anti-Semitism, uh, misconceptions of Zionism, you're not going to understand Zionism. If you're trying to learn it on YouTube and, you know, and uh, Jim Bob's theory about the devil and his, ch his channel, <laughs> right? And he found the secret code of 666 in BB's name, right? You're not going to learn Zionism from that guy. So, you know, so <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, I hope so, not. So, the, you know, you're, you're really getting a chillant of, of just everything negative in the world. And, and Zionism fits because the Jews are in the middle of the show. But it's not the Jews, it's the land of Israel. And basically every country that matters understands Zionism. You know, the prophecies of end of days, you know, religious right-wing Christianity is much bigger than we know or appreciate. You know, Harper, the PM of Canada, is a, is a really a major Christian Zionist. So when, when, when Canada or the West is involved in Zionism, it's because he understands a bit of, of where it comes from. Right, in the next piece, we'll, we'll discuss where that came from. But the point is, if I'm a Canadian and my PM is into Israel and Zionism, and I don't really know the facts, you know, I'm not deeply invested in religion, then you know, like in psychology, the mind makes up a story, and you know, it doesn't take much to to, con to contrive a, a ridiculous story. You know, just you know, Jews, the land, and the devil and the Antichrist. I mean, you can make a great cholin out of fantasy just from the, the pieces involved. Uh, it wouldn't be uh, the tastiest cholin I think we've ever had. But, uh, <laughs> it would be an interesting one, uh, to say the least. Right. Okay, uh, here's what we're going to do, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to have more with Rabbi David Katz on the other side. And quick shout-out to my friend Baruch 
Mordechai Gallo. Uh, he's getting married in a few weeks to Zahra Shem, a lone soldier served in the Israeli Defense Forces and was also a security guard at the Kotel. Contact him on Facebook and see what he needs for a wedding. Obviously, that's a big mitzvah. Uh, once again, this is Is a Prophecy, Israel National Radio, Arut Sheva. The show is simulcasted as Messiah Hour on YouTube. Email me at messiahhourgmail.com. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, it is a Jewish country, email me. As I said, we're doing this whole show about Zionism and the history of Zionism because the fans want it. So we deliver on what the fans want. We'll take a quick break. On the other side, more with Rabbi David Katz of SolMazal.com. This is Is a Prophecy on IsraelNationalRadio.com.